You will recall that we spoke of the need to perform certain audits on our system as it passed through production and construction. One of these audits is called the Physical Configuration Audit, or PCA. Explain what PCA is looking to confirm and why it is performed during construction and production, rather than before or after construction and production. PCA is essentially looking to confirm that the as-built item and the item's technical documentation is aligned. That is, we are looking to ensure that what we see is what the technical documentation says that we were going to get. In the course material, I use the example of ensuring consistency between a drawing showing the location of a stormwater drain and the actual location of that drain in the ground. This allowed me to locate the drain later when I was trying to make changes to a watering system in my garden. It sounds obvious, but the build state needs to be checked. If we don't do this, we will not be 100% sure that the drawings, materials lists and layout drawings reflect what was built. Some people will say that it doesn't really matter if there are a few errors in the drawings, so long as the system works. These people probably have not come across problems later in the system's life, during the utilisation phase, where we cannot maintain, upgrade or modify the system because the technical data is incorrect. This audit needs to be done during construction and production. It cannot be done before construction and production because the system elements that we're auditing will not be in place before construction and production. PCA can't be done after construction and production because a great deal of what we're trying to check will be hidden from us by the time the system production and construction is complete. For example, we know the location of the drains under the ground by noting the location of the trenches when they are dug and the pipes are laid. We know what type of metal our vehicle chassis is made from by noting the steel type being used at that stage in the construction process. And we know where the wiring looms are in the wings of our aircraft because we check them before the skin is put on the aircraft. PCAs are just one type of audit conducted as part of the broader configuration management effort by systems engineers. We also conduct functional configuration audits and audits of the configuration management system itself. Disposal of our systems is becoming much more important than it has been in the past. Why? because the concept of environmental responsibility is starting to take on much more significance as we move through the 21st century. What was acceptable yesterday will no longer be acceptable tomorrow. We can no longer afford to simply throw things away without due concern for the environment and the future. As systems engineers, it's our responsibility to try our best to ensure that disposability drives our design and development, so that we end up with systems that can in fact be disposed of in a responsible and cost-effective fashion. Let's look at the exercise on disposal. Select a disposal example that you're familiar with. Explain that disposal example and then reflect on the disposal issues that could have been simplified if disposal had been accounted for in the early stages of the design. Like a good many of our exercises, this exercise is about getting you to reflect on something that you've experienced in the past and think about how it could have been done better. If we all share these experiences, then we're bound to get better at thinking about issues like disposability. I hope you're able to come up with a good example of your own and share it with the other people doing this MOOC. I've been responsible for disposing of systems that were manufactured out of hazardous substances and found myself wondering whether there were non-hazardous alternatives that could have been considered. I've found myself disposing of systems that were fabricated in such a way that they could not be pulled apart easily, resulting in large quantities of recyclable material being thrown away simply because it could not be separated from the non-recyclable material. I've also been associated with disposals where the material we were dealing with was unknown due to poor documentation and configuration management discipline during the construction process. In these cases, we had to assume the worst case from a hazard perspective. You may not be exposed to too many disposal situations in your life, but when you are, you'll certainly appreciate systems engineers if they've taken disposal into account when they put the design of the system together.